In this video, we are going to see a library for creating PDFs with C Sharp. It's called Quest PDF, and we will do two examples with it for generating PDFs. Also, we are going to see how to configure the header, the body, and the footer of a PDF. So, let's get started. Alright, so let's create a console application. Let me double click on console app, create PDF, and by the way, you can find the code of this video in the GitHub repo in the description of this video. So we're going to use .NET 7 create. All right, so let me put some space here. The first thing that we need to do is to install the Quest PDF Nugget package. So let's go to the Solution Explorer, right click on the project, Manage Nugget Packages. Let's go to Browse and let's say Quest PDF. Click on here, Quest PDF, install, I accept. All right, so let's come here. And the first thing that we need to configure is the license that we're going to use. We can use a free license, which is the community license. So let me say quest PDF dot settings dot license quest PDF license type community semicolon here. Now, after that, we're going to be using a previewer. The previewer is an application that will allow us to see the PDF that we're going to generate as we are coding our application. Let's see that. First, I need to go to a command line so I can press window key R and we're going to get this window and write CMD OK. And in here, we can use the following command so that we can install quest PDF dot previewer. And with this, we're going to be able to preview our PDF in a very easy manner. Now I have already installed this tool so I don't have to run this command. So let me close this and let's come back here. And now I want to do the following. I want to say document, document and be sure to use quest PDF fluent dot create container. And here I can say show in previewer. All right. So now let's make a test. And I want to say control back tick to open the developer PowerShell here. You can use CMD if you want to. And let me say CD and I want to navigate to my create PDF folder so that in here I can say dot net watch enter. Now for some reason there is a bug and look how we have an error here. That doesn't matter. I can just press control C. I can come here control G B to recompile my application and then come back here and then dot net watch again and it will work. This may be a bug in Visual Studio. So let's just move on. All right, so now we're going to be executing our app and we're going to get a window here that says Quest PDF Previewer. Now in here, just for convenience, I'm going to put this here and I'm going to put this here. Let me put it like this. So let me say here container page. Let me create a page. I'll say page here and see that when I save control S here, we're going to get the page here at the right. Excellent. That is a previewer and it is going to allow us to be seeing the changes in the PDF as we code our application. So let me say page size and I want to determine the size of my page, which is going to be a four. So a four, which is the standard size for pages. Let me bring this namespace. And then after that, I want to put a header, header text. The first example is going to be a hello world. So hello world, semicolon, save and see that we have hello world here. Now it is very small, so I want to increase its size. So let me say here, bold font size, font size 35. We can also save and now it is bigger. We can use a color font color. And let me say colors, red, medium, semicolon, save. And now it is red. Of course, it is very close to the border of the page. So in that case, what we can do is to introduce a margin. So page margin one dot cent centimeter. We're going to use centimeters, save. And you can see that now there is more margin between the border of the page and the text. Now let's say that we're happy with this result. So how do we generate this PDF? So for that, we're going to come here and change this show in previewer to generate PDF. And let me put here the name of the PDF, which is going to be hello world dot PDF semicolon. Now let me put this 
in full size. Let me go to the developer PowerShell. Control C to stop running this. Now I want to press Control F5 because in this way the PDF is going to be created. As you can see, everything ran successfully. Now I can go to the Solution Explorer, right click on the project, open folder in File Explorer, and let me open the folder. Let's go to Bing, Debug, Net7. And you can see that we have Hello World PDF here. I can open it. And you are going to see that indeed we have our Hello World PDF open which is great, but it is a little bit boring. So let's make something way more exciting. We're going to create a new document that is going to have paragraphs, images, columns, rows, and more. So let's do that. Let me say document, create, container, semicolon here, container, page, page. All right. Now let me make sure that we have everything working. So showing previewer so that we can visualize everything in our previewer. So let me save. Let's come back here to developer PowerShell. Once again, .NET watch. And let me open this. Let's wait. We're going to wait for this to get refreshed so that we don't have this hello world text here. Just so that we are sure that we're working with the current code. Okay. So as you can see, we have this because the code that I'm going to do is very big. I'm going to have this Visual Studio instance open like this in full size. All right. So first thing first, let's make another margin. So page margin one centimeter and then page header. Let's configure the header text. Let's learn dot net bold font size 35 and font color. We're going to be using again red or we can use blue. Let's just use blue a medium blue safe. Let's see that we have everything here. All right. So let's continue. Now we have seen that we have a header and that's great. But as you may know, a page is divided into three parts, which is the header, the content in the middle and the footer. All right. So let's work on the content, which is the middle part. So let's say page content. I'm going to define a column. Let me say column here, semicolon here. And I can say column item. We can put items in a column and item can be text. It can be an image. So let me say, for example, Felipe safe. And let's see that here we have Felipe here. Now, if I don't want to be writing my own text, I can just use a placeholder. So placeholders, Lauren Ipsum, and I can save. And let's see that now we have this paragraph here. Now, after that paragraph, I want to put an image. So let me say column item image and then placeholders and I can use a placeholder image. So 200, 100, save. And now as you can see, we have this. Now I want to add some margin between this paragraph and this image. So what I can do is to say column spacing and I can put a 20 here, save come back. And as you can see now, there is more space between those two elements. Now this is fine. But what if after this image, I want to put two columns here, one column here at the left and one column here at the right. And each column will have its own text and its own image. Let's see how we can do that. Let's come back here. And here after the second item, I want to put a third item. But that item is not going to be a text, it's not going to be an image, but it's going to be a row. And a row will allow us to create columns inside of that row. So let's do that. Let me say here row, semicolon here, row spacing, we're going to add some spacing. And now I want to say row relative item, which means that it has a relative size. Column, let's define a column here. And in here, I want to put the same content, a paragraph and an image. Of course, I need to use this C. So C here and C here. Of course, I can put here whatever I want. It doesn't have to be the same content, but just to make this example quicker, we're well, just going to repeat the content. So after this, I can repeat this so that we have two columns. We have this column and this column inside of this row. So let me save. Let's see that everything is here working correctly. It is not. So let me say yes, so that we can restart our app. After that, let's come back here. 
And you're going to see that, yes, we have our header, our paragraph, and image, but after that we have more text and images, but in separate columns, which was what we wanted. Can we have three columns? Of course, let's do that. We just have to repeat this code. We want a new row, okay, so we want a new row with three columns. So let me copy this, let me create a new row here. Okay, so we have our new row. Now we want three columns in that row, right? So let me just copy this and paste it here. And now we have one, two, and three columns. So we have one row and three columns in here. And it is that easy. Yes, it is that easy. Let me save. Let's come back here. And now we're going to see that we have our page one, but now we have a page two, of course, because there is no more space here in order for us to put all of this content here. So a new page was created, which is excellent. I didn't have to program that. And as you can see, we have three columns here. And as I mentioned before, the header is here also because the header is a common element of every single page in the PDF so that we're going to have it in all pages. If you don't want to have this in every page, then it means that it shouldn't have been a header. Now we have a header content, but we're missing a footer. Let's create a footer. What I want to do with the footer is to put the current page and the total number of pages. So let's do that. We have here a header. We have here the content. Let me collapse this. And now I can put here a footer, footer. All right, something that I want to do with this footer is to have it aligned at the center. So align center. All right, so text, I want to put some text. I can do this like this and then in here I can say x dot current page number all right so current page number x dot span and I can write here this semicolon total pages and that's actually it save and let's see that now we have two out of two and page one of two as you can see we're able to configure the footer of all of the pages of our document with this simple code that we have here. Now, in the next video, what I want to do is to create an invoice so that we have a header for the invoice, but we also have a detail with items on each row and a total at the end. If you want to learn more about .NET, buy my Udemy course today. I have courses on C Sharp, Blazor, React and Web APIs, and more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.